Hey, Asher from All Things Dentistry. Thanks so much for joining me. Today we're going to be talking about an experiment based on a viewer's comments, which relates to Dr. Ricucci's awesome working length video. I'm super grateful he allowed me to post it. It's created a lot of discussion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the apex locator and then take some radiographs up with the file in the tooth and let's see what it looks like on a radiographic representation. And if you don't know about the video that I'm talking about, I placed it in the cards above and the description box below and actually at the end of this video is so you can watch it in its entirety. Let's take a look. Hey Ash from All Things Dentistry and we're back with our tooth and we've got a number 20 file in and we've stopped it at where Dr. Cucci is because uh, I had a really good comment about from practice practice, you know, what does this look like on a radiograph? So rather than using just a 10 file because it might be hard to see on a radiograph, um, let's take this and take an x-ray. So we're going to actually hook this up to a bunch of other apex locators but I've been asked by other people to take a look and where does it compare to these x-rays? These apex locators and we're gonna see the technique that I've been trained on and let's see what happens. All right, so let's measure when we're right at Dr. Kuchi is talking. Yeah, roughly 20 and a half. Okay, so here we are. We're gonna take our periapical radiograph. So we've got it all set up. And the machine is waiting. Let me put this in here. Double click that, and then we'll go. And let's take a look, just so you see that it's actually happening. Oh, there we go. So that is at the reading. Okay, so this is one red bar. And it's the way I've been trained. And let's just take a look. Leave it there. You can see where our reference point it is right on that cusp. So let's actually take this out and let's measure it. Yeah, 21 and a half millimeters. And let's place this file back in. apex locator reading where I was trained how to do this and uh, I'm just going to take an x-ray and let's see where that ends up on periapical radiograph hmm all right so we're right I'd say that's actually on the money Okay, so let's just review what we found, actually. Uh, so when we take the apex locator on the root CX2 to just the end of the blue scale, which is right here, um, this is a radiographic um, interpretation or radiographic representation of what this is relative to our file in alginate. And it measures at 20.5 millimeters. Now, if we go to the one red bar, that's uh, where I've been trained, and that is right outside the constriction. Um, that's represented here on this radiograph and it's at 21.5 millimeters. So um, usually like Dr. Ricucci talks, um, most, you know, we've been taught to, I have, and many people that I know have been taught to take our apex locator right to the one red bar. And then depending on if the case is vital or necrotic, we subtract 0.5 millimeters or one millimeter. Uh, ultimately, you could just go to it appears that you could go just right here and you're gonna get the same results as subtracting one millimeter from the one red bar. And let's see, I just did this case last night actually on a periodontist friend of mine and this is literally uh, as according to Dr. Ricucci's technique of going right to the end of the blue scale and this is what we had. So let's now compare uh, our apex locator at this position as Dr. Ricucci has talked about with the old school root CDX the Densply Apex Promark Apex Locator and the Cybron Endo Apex Locator. So I've looted with some cotton flowable composite and number 20 file into the tooth. And then uh, let's compare and see where the output is as compared on the other Apex Locators. There we go. So that's the place we wanna be. And then let's just check it on our party of Apex Locators. I'll be honest, this is the, the Promark from Densify. Oh, you just saw it right there. Every time I turn it on with 
the cordon. I bought two of these two years ago and I can't stand them. First of all, they look really sexy, but every time I turn it on, most times when I turn it on with the plug, it doesn't go, first of all. That's really frustrating. So I have to do this, turn it on without the plug in. I don't even know why it does. That's a software issue. And the second is, is that it's rechargeable battery. So, you know, when it ends up dying, I have to go charge it and I can't charge and use it at the same time. It's actually quite frustrating. So with the other ones, with the Root ZX, the old school and the Root ZX2 and this Apex ID, you can just change the battery. So note to self, never buy that one, ever. I mean, it's super accurate, but it's quite frustrating. Okay, let's see where, all right, let's check that one. Be readings, there we go. So it's roughly the same place on the old school Apex locator. The best one in the market, I think. It's really sexy. I'll tell you, it never turns on all the time. Okay, that one's there, right on the blue. Oh, just right at the top of the green. Six, that's what it was. All right, cool. Let's just make sure we're back in the right place here. Yep. Now we come all circle. Cool. Endodontics has taken a wrong path. There is a lot of confusion concerning the way to determine the working length using electronic apex locators. With this video showing the treatment of a simple routine case, I'm insisting on the way to establish the correct working length at the apical constriction using electronic apex locators. It is the mandibular first molar of a 60-year-old woman with a large composite restoration and necrotic pulp. Swelling is present on the buccal gingiva. After access preparation, the reason for pulp necrosis is evident. Curious tissue left under restorative materials. This is meticulously removed and root canal orifices prepared. With this apex locator, working length is established at the end of the blue scale. This point indicates the apical constriction or in its absence, the point where the instrument is leaving the canal and reaching the periodontal ligament. Contrary to what recommended by many clinicians, you don't need to go with your instrument to the zero reading point, located at the middle of the green scale, or to the pink scale. If you do so, you are in the foramen which means you are beyond the limits of the canal, in the periodontal ligament space. If you take a radiograph with the instruments at the apical level indicated by the machine, you will see that they are slightly short of the radiographic apex, usually 1, 1.5 millimeters. This distance may vary, however. Respect the established working length. Use your instruments manually in the apical third for better control. Do frequent recapitulations with smaller instruments. Never apical patency. Calcium hydroxide medication was placed. After 10 days, the tooth is asymptomatic. Calcium hydroxide is removed and the canal filled with a pre-mixed calcium silicate cements and single cones. The post-operative radiograph confirms ideal apical level of the obturation material. All this is based on sound substantiated biological principles and not on empirical recommendations. 
More details on the topic can be found in PubMed, typing my name, and in my previous posts in Facebook.